Hello everyone, am I audible? Yeah, so <clears throat> actually sir, uh, I want to share a small thing to you sir. Mm -hmm. Is my screen visible, sir? Yeah, yeah. What happened actually? What is the issue? So actually, the this thing, my application is running absolutely fine, but when I submit to the portal, it uh, fails the three cases and the error it is given. I have practically do not have any clue. Uh, I have written this to you, but see, sir, this is the error. Now, if you add student. It will add absolutely okay. I don't know why it is not working in the portal. Now, if I submit, the student get added. If you want to see the this thing, it is working. You go back. If you want to update, you change the name. You change its course only now. Sam for Mad and BDM. If you submit, it will change it. If you see whether it is changed or not, it is changed. If you go back, if you want to delete this, you will delete it. Now, if you want to again add with the same roll number. Okay, so basically what you're trying to say is the application is working fine, but on portal. Uh, it market. is giving the, all the applicant, all the required thing is asking in the question, absolutely working fine, but whenever I submit this to in the portal, the portal give me this this kind of error, sir. I do not understand why it is saying. Is sir, it same is with my case also. Same thing, sir. Everything is okay, but when submitting in the portal, it is saying all the test cases, zero test cases passed. I have sent you this uh, full code to you, sir. Yeah, I've I've seen that. Uh, I just I mean I did not see the code, but uh, the very first thing when I unzipped, I saw that there is a folder appearing, right? No, no. So, uh, you just refer my second mail. I I saw that that you have answered. Actually, I have uh, sent you three four mail. You just refer to the second mail attachment. Uh, that is what I I am now showing you, sir. Okay. I don't know what what is happening actually. And today we have the. Last day of submission. No, I have absolutely no clue when this app is working absolutely fine. Then how come in the portal this can happen? And it is saying ki, uh, the test case check where application is not able to create your student resource database. Yeah, same, um, same, same error for me also. It's it's working uh, fine in VS Code, sir. Everything is working, but. While submitting, I am also getting the same error, unable to create. Same, I face the same issue too. Uh, but uh, what I uh, what I have did was I have uh, misspelled the table column names. Please verify that uh, column. Uh, I mean database table that attribute names. Please cross check once. Uh, if, after I checking it, it was uh, working fine. Maybe a little bit of issue with. It. No, I, I have misspelled. Cross check. Yeah. Ah, everything. Check, I, yeah. check for the elements of the forms that you had mentioned the same name as mentioned in the uh, given doc file. Like Actually, even I doc file, uh, yeah, even I copy pasted it. Copy Nothing pasted. has changed. As per the Jinja, whatever the logic is required, I've put on that. Other than that, whatever the in the PDF what was given, I have just copy pasted it. Is Nothing I have file, changed. App file has all the elements of the model and 
controller yeah or? yeah or? yeah, or? yeah no. it has all the elements initially like as a thought like we uh, no 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 we i did that mistake earlier but then yes, i copied yes, I the entire model into app and then i when i uh, merge all the elements in the app then it works uh, yeah it yeah i i so, also uh, prashant i saw your file also there was com compartmentalization right so i yes, did yes, uh, yeah so i thought of replying uh, but then it was too late it was already the session's time right so yeah, i thought I, of directly I, telling you in session if i mean if the same doubt appears yeah so that then, thing you need to keep in mind that it has to be a single file but uh, i hmm. i have yeah, yeah, transferred yeah. this thing in the single Thank single you, sir, file sir. no only one file app.py hmm where model and controller both is there yeah not really sure man how to how to debug this and so no, the worst like, part is like after i have submitted i mean i, I got all the errors and then uh, i did something with the code but it was working once it worked fine then again now it has stopped working What, I mean, I'm getting back to that environment so with the virtual environment. Meaning. No, it is not showing HTTP, uh, uh, HTTP like that uh, URL. Also, it is not coming now. Everything stopped working. No, no. So what change did you do? What was the change? uh first so first like i did it with uh, like you told like model underscore two dot py i did that then i copy pasted it to app dot py so it was not working then i changed that uri i have used that os dot uh, what what is stored in the screen cast i thought like if i can put the directory like uh, the entire path uh, it, it might work uh then it now it is like it is not even showing that http nothing is showing only the virtual environment when i am putting python app.py it is coming back to that uh, same virtual environment that means my app is not working but nothing is wrong in the app so nothing i did no the question is sir what to do all right in the uri uh, like when i pasted my uri the underscore was not coming so it is, is it coming for you like maybe some spelling error in that case no like Which yesterday underscore? till night 1130 that same code was working today afternoon when i am trying to submit it's not working i just open the laptop and i wanted to like i, I got a break so i thought i'll submit it and it's not working did you did you activate the virtual environment Yes, everything yes. i did yeah everything i did i'm telling you like yesterday last function i wrote for delete night 1130 so it was working no, fine no no while when you started it again today did you activate the virtual yeah, environment yeah 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 because i i have installed everything in the virtual environment naturally i have to activate it i have done that So what is the error coming? Is there some error? No message? error. No error. Now it is not showing any error. When I am ac activating virtual environment and I am giving Python app dot py, it is coming back to that virtual environment. Nothing is shown. No error. Nothing is shown. That means my app is basically crashing. So why it is crashing? That I don't no, no, understand. No, no. If there is no error, the app is not crashing. Your run call is not working, right? So just check if the app dot run is written in the right context. There is no indentation in. Uh, app dot run so because you have used that condition right if name equals to ha ha yeah yeah i mean there is no i mean if it's an error sir it will come as a red underline like uh, nothing is coming of that sort if it's an indentation error also the python will say it's an i mean it's unindented nothing the important uh, part is said that there is two system the first system belongs to us the second system belongs to the coder when it is working in this system everything is fine but when i say use the same code with the same thing in the second system it is not working this is the issue sir mm. yeah. now in this case what to do sir what can be done i mean what what should i tell you i have i don't uh, so at least you at can point, check uh, some its codes uh, at least you can check some its code i mean if it's okay with you i mean oh, yeah it's a graded assignment but uh, we both are having the same issues so it might be if you can see i can't share my screen because i am not uh, attending this call from laptop 
No, so uh, okay, it's okay. Do not uh, uh, show your code here. Uh, Samit has already sent me the code. Probably I'll go through it, but the only issue is time, right? So if I even if I go through it, I'll need at least some time to go through the code, understand it. How it works. Yes. Sir. Even mm. if I run and see, uh, the endpoints might work, but exactly to debug it uh, becomes uh, it becomes a tedious job, right? So I've been uh, trying to solve issues right from the afternoon. I have re replied to some, could not reply to some, and uh, I, in some I did cases, not mail you. I did. I was trying on my till now. I was trying. No, so in some cases, what happens is we miss space instead of. I mean, some students add space instead of hyphen, and then the complete file is not getting uh, uh, retrieved. Right. So, so that, like, that, if that, this kind of so, if it is a syntax error, then in the first place only, it won't run. Hmm. I mean, how we are no, no, getting no, the output? About, like, uh, it's syntax error. It's not about syntax error. So, for example, we give a form, right? Uh, hmm. uh, any HTML file you have to create, that hmm. file has an ID. Okay. Hmm. If, if while pasting, while copying and pasting the file, generally what happens, the underscore does not get copied and uh, instead of underscore, you get a space. We don't see that much because we don't look at the code, right? But when we run, uh, how will the uh, evaluator know that, okay, there was underscore, but now there is space. So it does not recognize the file. Yeah, but um, yes, so that, that, is, sort, I don't think. that is, I don't that think is so. a kind of issue that we have seen in the past, right? And especially in week five, six, seven, it becomes very difficult to debug. Why? Because uh, there are so many try and error problem, try and error, uh, try and accept uh, tags that you yourself put in the code, right? So I mean, at the end of the day, what is happening? Uh, for example, if I want to add a student. Okay, something will happen uh, in the database or while adding the student. But what do we do if the error comes? You catch or you accept the error or and render other template, right? No student found or student already exists. Getting what I'm saying? So the flow of application okay. does not stop, and you still get 200 status code. Okay, but is the student adding to the database? No. So, but that can be seen, right? If I open the database and DB browser, I can see like how many students have added. Everything is okay, sir. Even the enrollment enrollment table also. If I'm adding the student, like I followed what you taught, assigning the course and all, it, everything is updating, update, delete. Everything is working. But like today, when I submitted in the portal, it is showing zero test cases passed. It's really bad. No, sir, yes. you tell me, sir, what to do, sir, because I mean, which part I should look into? I don't know because I have no clue. Mm. So, see, uh, probably in the test cases, right? Test, test case to check whether application is able to create student and uh, test case to yeah. whether application is able to update student. Probably it is working in your local machine, no issues. But uh, uh, things which I said, right? We are using try and accept block. So the how do we how do we check that these things are actually getting updated from the status codes, right? So the evaluator by itself uh, checks whether a status code is there or not, right? So if a particular status code is there, this means that the test case is passing, but then it goes to the table and see there is nothing. So that is that may be the issue. Uh, Samit, while copying the database URI, did you check whether underscore was pasted or not? Actually, I didn't copy that. I write it that. No, actually, see, uh, Archit, the I problem is his application is working here, right? Yeah, so like I checked the the error. This is the this is the thing you are talking about. Yeah, yeah. Th this is I have typed it. I didn't copy this. I only copy the in uh, HTML file thing. This thing and balance I uh, added. And whenever I have changes, I refresh this database. I am just seeing whether student get added, whether if I add some relation to that, mapping with student with the course, whether that get added, everything is coming fine. All operation is working. But when I submit this to portal, they are saying hey, student can't add. I don't know.
we will have to check this. Um, so, I mean, at this point, I cannot say what can be done. Then, sir, at least uh, if you can extend uh, one day and then if you check and reward us, then we can able to sort it out. Or else we are losing marks. Okay, let me let me talk to the team. Okay, it's on. I guess it's weekend, so I'm not uh, sure. But yeah, I'll try to put this issue because this looks serious. Uh, many students are facing the same issue, right? So, yes, sir. We like cannot uh, let uh, marks lost for no reason, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now I have me... stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> now now I've stopped trying it, sir. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I mean, you, you put in a lot of efforts and then you see zero test case, but I think that's really frustrating. Yeah, at least uh, till week four, uh, public test cases, 100 out of 100 we saw. Okay. Now this is showing zero. So even it's even more frustrating. Okay. Sir, okay. Yeah, even, public even is not getting passed. There is a bug also. Actually, I tried it without uh, giving the template file. And even without the template file, it is showing 100 out of 100 test case passed. See, this is also the case, right? So I, I some are fortunate, from, some are lucky, some are very unlucky. I don't know from where it is taking that template file because okay. it, it is showing 100 out of 100. Actually, who whoso are getting 100 out of 100 without somebody in the template, they're unlucky. Okay. So I, I just tried it. After that, I submitted it the template. But yeah, I tried it and it is giving 100 out of 100. So there is there might be a bug in test cases, I think. Okay, let me put this through. Just give me a minute. So entire day we are sitting with the code only, we are not doing any other work. <laughs> and then it's showing zero. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a small doubt in the five type session work one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, is it, if it is related to live session, you can share your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can share my. I, I can present my screen. Yeah, yeah, you okay. can. Okay. Is it visible? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. So at the end, okay, at the end. Um, okay, by the way, could you start your program? We I mean I try to uh, allow, I mean, the, the script's not working, virtual environment not getting activated. Is it working now? Yeah, yeah, it's working, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now tell me what the issue is. I don't know why it's not changing at all. Yeah. Yes, sir. Like, till, till this, this line, I've done all things. And when I do m2 dot creator dot append d2, mm -hmm. it's showing that uh, m2 is not defined. No, so uh, but you no, know, if you go back to that command prompt, yeah. So if yeah. it is showing error, it would have shown here itself, right? Actually, you're using no, it's a recorded session. Swati, oh. you're using m2, but you're using M2, but you have not queried the database to what is the value of M2. No, I've done it earlier. You can no, see. No, earlier it won't work because you're running a new Python shell. It won't work that way. 
if you come to your that v um, pi charm that shell yes you you just imported everything from app and then you just said m2 dot creator dot append so the, the shell does not know what m2 is you need to write like m2 is equal to um, movie dot query dot get two and but two earlier early i have done uh, no no followed see, the same sorry, shell no, does app dot uh, from app import star right yeah. that is the first step uh, of your module okay everything gets imported there and then you have to recreate the objects so they should ex uh, exist in the in the in the shell Okay, so, so before doing m2 dot creator dot append, you should first uh, define what m2 is. Okay. Actually, m2 is a temporary variable. You are assigning something to it, but here you are not assigning anything to m2. So you have to assign it something first. Right. So shell, so, shell is so like uh, see. So when there are two ways of writing Python code, right? So one is when you want to see result line by line. Okay. And one is okay. when you want to see, I mean, want want to write every everything as a code or as a module, right? So this resource.py, app.py that we create, we want that code to stay and run every time, right? So we add things there. So once the variable is defined there, it will stay. But in shell, what happens is you when if you if you define a variable, it will stay there till the time shell is open. Okay. So I need to define D2 and M2 again, like right. movie name equal to yeah. something. So define meaning here we have created the object. Okay. If those things are already there in the database, you can retrieve them. Okay. See, uh, uh, I mean, M2 or this director being in the shell is a different thing. And it being in the database is a different thing. Okay. Okay. Both are independent. So here, when we created D2 and M2, it is there in the session. And when we committed that, it was there in the database also, right? So I, we could have retrieved. So when we were retrieving it, D2 or M2, it would come from the session itself. Because it is there defined, right? But uh, in, if you are opening a new shell, what will happen? The variables defined in the previous shell are gone. Okay. But since you had already added uh those variables in database those objects in database before they would stay in the database so you can now retrieve them rather than adding them again okay, okay what you can go go to pycharm hmm. now you just write d1 equals to uh, just write d1 press enter no don't write equals to press enter since d1 is not defined right hmm. now you write d1 your application is running. Okay, yes, we are putting yes. the module. Okay, no need. So D1 equals to director capital D director with capital D dot query dot get. You can put one or two in bracket. In bracket. Right. So here what we are doing, we are creating an object D1, but we are retrieving it. I mean, D1 is an object or variable created in the shell, but what are we assigning it? A retrieved value from the database. Okay, retrieved. Just, yeah, just put enter. Now you type D1. Press enter. See, there is direct. Yeah. Right. So now D1 is defined. Therefore, you okay. can... Get now I can proceed with my. Uh, so initially, why why did we get error? Why was it not uh, uh, defined? Because it was just a variable you wrote and tried to get the value of, right? And it, I need to retrieve movie also. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right, so you can. Then, stop yeah. The doubt is solved. You can stop. Okay. Thanks. Okay, about the problem statement, I put it forward. Let's see what I what I'll get a, a, as a response, right? About the lab assignment I'm talking about. So nothing to do right now from our end. Uh, yeah, you can leave it as is. If you feel the code is fine, leave it. We will see. You can just uh, I mean, uh, what you can do is submit because at least they, it will be there. No? Something will be there. You can submit the code later on if if the deadline extends. You can again submit. 
but sir, I have sent you the full quote. Just go through and give, give me the thing. Means if I some doing something wrong, then I need to know where I am going wrong. Yeah, I'll do that, right? So I mean, uh, but uh, it is very means uh, one question to me. If the things are working in one system, what could be the problem? It is not working in the other environment. There can be multiple problems. That's why we are not able to debug it uh, very easily. Right? Uh, one of the issue is from week five, week six, week seven assignments, we use a lot of try and error. I mean, try and accept blocks. So that is one major reason for not uh, crashing the for the program not crashing and not showing any error. Right. So test case uh, by themselves cannot understand. This. Okay, they can understand they're getting 200 status code, but from where is it getting 200 status code is something that is not understood, right? So there can be multiple reasons. One one prominent reason that we have seen is we ourselves are not able to debug sometimes because of this thing, right? There is no error. Code is not crashing anywhere. It is working for everything. Still, you are not getting the answer or not getting the test case passed. Okay, I'll go through the code, uh, uh, and fortunately, I mean, luckily, if I find a bug, if there is any, then I'll let you know, right? Uh, just after the session. Okay. Sir, I had a doubt in week six uh, regarding Swagger. Can I share the screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah actually, my uh, issue is uh, if I run with the Chrome, it is working fine, but the same if we run with the Swagger, it was throwing an issue. Is the screen is visible? Yeah. 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 I'm running with the swagger. When I run it, it is showing like failure to fetch possible reason or something and that. Mm -hmm. But if the same request URL I'm copying and I'm putting it here, mm -hmm. it was uh, giving the valid things. Similarly, for post request, I have tried here. It was uh, giving a valid response. Mm -hmm. But when I try with the swagger, it is same issue. It was showing like failure to fetch possible reasons. Uh, network failure something okay so the possible reason and the prominent reason is course c-o-r-s okay i'm not okay. sure what it stands is. for cross origin resource uh, issue okay. right? sharing cross origin a resource sharing okay so how to fix this i'll show you the problem is swagger is if you see the uh, i mean if you see the url Okay. Uh, uh, this is the request URL, right? So you're trying to request some local host, but where is Swagger yeah. running? It's running on online degree dot gitlab dot. Okay. okay. So cross origin, right? So you're trying okay, to fetch okay. a resource that is not there. Okay. Okay. It was searching somewhere around uh, inside the online degree. Yeah. So uh, and uh, uh, in local machine, why is it working? Because the main or the domain name or the what we call base URL is same. Okay, okay. Now, uh, so that is can one. You please, uh, yeah, can you please do some uh, work? Or, I mean, how we can uh, uh, check uh, in, uh, while you are uh, going with uh, Yeah, so sure. yeah, so we will do that. I've added, I mean, I'll take, uh, I'll try to see if that works, right? Uh, so, I mean, the thing that I had for today's session was uh, inclusive of that. Okay, okay, so this is very prominent error that so many people get, but that is the reason, right? You understand what what is the issue? Yeah, yeah, I completely okay. understand now. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So the thing is, we'll try to solve it, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Uh, so so in this session, what I planned was to go ahead with the application that we created in week five, and uh, uh, create that update and delete functionality with the help of APIs. So that is what uh, I've been planning and we'll try to uh, incorporate that API functionality. Uh, see, we're creating update and delete functionality with the help of APIs, right? Now we want to uh, use that functionality or use those API resources to actually update and delete in our application. Okay, so that is what we will try to do today. Okay, so we can consider that the one, uh, uh, the place where we are creating APIs is a uh, uh, is an environment 
who, who is exposing the resources okay and our application is actually using that resource or using that functionality to do something in it right within it okay so let's say what did we do till now in week 5 application we could uh, create a new directors movies and uh, uh, assign them right we can read them and uh, create them okay but update and delete we left off because uh, that was something we will try to do with the alpha wave okay. let me share my screen Okay, so my screen is uh, visible, right? And I have opened VS Code. So what I've done here, I've just uh, copy pasted the complete code that we have done in week five, and I've created a different folder called week five ext week week six. So it is extended week five extended in week six. All right. And if you see the code environment, right, everything is there. Everything is same, right? Uh, we will be working with the same application, so the application code by itself remains same. We will only be adding some things. Okay, only be adding some extra things. All right, and then we will be creating just as we create a, a different module for models where we save all the models. We will be having a different uh, resource or a different module for creating the API code. Okay, so that is what we will try to do now. All right, so now for that, what we will use? We will use Flask RESTful, right? For creating APIs, we'll be using Flask RESTful. Just give me a minute. Yeah, uh, so what I was saying that we'll be creating a different module where we will store all the APIs, okay, or we'll be creating endpoint or resources for APIs. And the way we did here in app.py, we imported and configured that in our app.py. Similarly, we'll be importing that module and configuring with our application. Okay, is this clear? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just create a new module and generally APIs are called as resources. Okay, so with the convention, I'll create this file called resources.py. Okay, resources.py. And this will have all the code related to API. So what are we actually using? Okay, we are actually using Flask RESTful. Okay, so we'll, I'll import necessary things from Flask RESTful. Import API resource. Pass. I'll, I'll tell you what these things are. Okay, so just as we imported in app.py, what did we import? Things that were required in Flask, right? So from Flask, import Flask object. So this Flask object will be used to instantiate Flask app, right? Similarly, in Flask SQL Alchemy, imported SQL Alchemy. So that was used to instantiate the DB uh, object, right? Similarly, this API will be used to instantiate the API object. Right. So the next thing that we'll write is API equals to API. Right. See this, the code is very similar to this, right? DB SQL Alchemy. Then we'll start off writing the classes. Similarly, here we'll start off writing the uh, resources. Okay. So uh, the way models are created as a class, resources are also created as a class. Right? So we'll create a class and name it anything starting uh, capitalized, right? So I'll write the uh, uh, API underscore directors. So these APIs will actually relate to all the functionalities of directors, right? So update, delete that we are trying to do. And we'll also do one thing that is uh, what we already did, that is reading all the directors, right? So retrieving all the directors from the database and showing them. Okay. And what was similar here? What did it inherit? DB dot model, right? 
So here it will be inheriting a resource class. Okay. So this is an object. This is a class. So we have a imported object to instantiate API object. This will be using which is similar to DB or app. And here resource is the class that we have inherited. Okay. And then yes. here, yeah. This Flask RESTful is a part of Flask only? No, we have to explicitly import it. Just as we imported, uh, sorry, yeah, install yeah. it. Just as we installed uh, Flask SQL Alchemy, right? So that I'll do. Okay. okay. Define. Then, then uh, what was, how is it different, right? So if I go to app.py while creating routes, what did we do? We first created the route, mentioned the endpoint where it will work, and then specified the methods. And what were the functions actually? There were some functions, some function names that were relevant to what we are trying to do, right? All director would give the list of or would uh, retrieve all the directors, right? Add director here function name where it was used to add director. So it was intuitive and which we gave, right? But that is not the case with APIs. Here, the function names are actually HTTP request names or HTTP method names, okay? What are HTTP method names? Get post, put, delete, right? So the function name is fixed here. We cannot change this name, all right? So we'll create get request with the help of this function, all right? And since it is a class uh, function of a class, it is a class method, right? So we will have to write self, not self, okay? We have to write self because it is a class method. And then we can write on the logic, okay? Same thing will come here. The way we are writing logic, similarly, we'll be writing logic here. Okay. So let us try to get all the directors from the database. Okay. How do we do that? I'll write D1 object. Okay. And uh, how will I retrieve all the directors from the from the database? I'll write director dot query dot all. Right. Now, how will this, will this module know what is director? Right. How will this module know what is director? It doesn't, right? There is no way of doing that. So what we will do? We will import everything from whatever model if these things are written. Okay. From models to input stars. So this will import all the objects and classes created in models too. Right? And therefore, the director is now defined. Okay. Is the thing that we need to do what will this uh, d1 have now d1 is a list of directors or a list of objects that will show all the director okay now what i want to do what what is generally the output of an api the output of an api is generally a json so resource right so we don't get an html or rendered everything we will get a json file all right so we'll try to create a json file here we are trying to create, create an API, right? So we will try to get this data delivered in the form of JSON. How is it different from app.py? What was getting returned? Two things. Okay, two, two possible things were getting returned. One was either you render a template. Okay, render a template meaning the endpoint will return an HTML file as a response and that will be rendered by the browser. Or you redirect to some other endpoint. So those were the two probable outputs but in a resource what are we re what are we returning we will be returning some json file okay now let's try to create that json file with the help of the data that we got so what we what do we have now we just have this uh, d1 which is a list of objects so with the help of this list i'll try to create json okay or json or or uh, uh, dictionary python dictionary okay so what i'll do is i will write all underscore directors all directors and create an empty dictionary okay empty dictionary and with, and how do we fill this empty dictionary by using a for loop i'll write for director in directors not directors d1 right because this is an object for director in directors what do I want to do? I want to fill the uh, director ID as a key and director name as the value. Right. So this uh, 
dictionary how what is what should be the format it should be something like this id colon name so we have the format okay so these are rough rough names which i have just used just to let you know the format but how are we going to actually fill it uh, something like this right so we will refer to this dictionary all characters this is where we provide the key it will be director dot d underscore id how do i bring this d underscore id it is a defined attribute in uh, director table model. sorry table or model dot d underscore id is from table no, or this from is object model? this object okay okay wait how did you how did you fill the values in html by using object dot attribute right let us remember i'm asking attribute, attribute defined in a model or defined in a table 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 model attribute defined in a model acting as a column in table okay right so did is actually an attribute defined in the model right so models dot py this is what we are actually yes, yes. trying to target okay so this will be the key all directors director id and what do i want to assign there i want to assign name okay this is again a defined attribute in director table okay so once this is done what do we have we will have all directors filled properly as a dictionary and that is what we are going to return on directors right we don't need this i was just telling you the format all right so did you get this code what we are doing we are just creating an empty dictionary here i hope you got the format okay let me just type it here and right So this is the format I want to retrieve data when I go to a particular URL or a defined API URL, right? Uh, in app.py URL was defined there itself, right? But in uh, resource we are yet to define the URL. Okay, where I mean what URL needs to be hit so that I get this get function running? Okay, that is still to be done. All right. So this all directors is an empty directory. We we retrieve D one as a list of objects. Then we were actually looping through the object and each element of that d1 list was an object so we just fill this right all directors d1 uh, uh, dot did equals to the uh, uh, directory dot name all right and then we return this all right now once the application uh, uh, the endpoint or the functionality is ready we will have to define and link this uh, functionality with the endpoint right so how do we do that we'll use this api object api dot add resource okay and then we pass on what is the class that we are defining this uh, api for uh, this resource for all right and then we define what is the endpoint that you want to use yes it will be slash since we are creating an api let us put this convention of adding api okay and then i'll write all vectors is this api required every time no right it is not required but we are just putting it as a convention so that we can we know that okay this is an api resource all right that's all that is the first endpoint so what you have done you have actually defined this get with this endpoint okay how does the application know that we are only we are need to define by get only because there is only get at this point right but when we have other functions like what are what are the other possible function post put delete right so in that case we will define uh, when those functions are defined the api uh, the endpoints are defined accordingly okay i'll show you how to do that all right so this is all 
this is all we need in resource file at this point. Okay, let us save this. Now let us configure this file with the app.py. Okay, so how do we do that? First, we need to import everything from resource uh, resource from source module. Import everything, right? So okay, this is resources. Right? So this problem can come. So from resources, we are trying to import everything. Okay. Other thing that we need to import is from flask underscore course import course. Okay, this is another object that we need to import. Why do why are we doing this to uh, uh, remove that problem, right? Which came a few minutes before. What was the issue? Uh, when we are trying to retrieve an API using the documentation given in Swagger, it was we are we were trying to uh, uh, hit the base URL and the defined API endpoint. That is okay. But where was the document already? It was there in some different uh, uh, extension, right? It was there in some different domain name serving at some different domain name. So that is called as cross origin. There is a different, uh, we are accessing, you're trying to access a resource that is in some different machine and the server is different and the uh, actual file from where you're doing it, that is also in different. So that is called as cross origin resource sharing. So we want to share this resource between the uh, cross origin. So what we need to do is we need to import this object. All right. How did we instantiate DB object? Like this, similarly, we'll instantiate API object. Okay. So just as DB object was instantiated with API, we instantiated uh, uh, with, with app, right? So app passing on uh, with the DB object and initiated. Similarly, app passed on to API and initiated. And what else, what extra thing do we need to do? We need to use this course, right? that we created. So what we need to do, we also need to pass on our application to this course object. Okay. So these are the two things that we need to do to actually remove that error. Okay, so app.config and everything remains same because we are uh, actually referring to the same database. Okay, but what do we want? This thing. Okay, this extra things are required. And then second thing that we required was connecting uh, our application to API. So if we save this, models we don't need to collect uh, uh, with models we don't need to connect a resource, but in the resource we imported models. So that is that connection is already done. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll activate my virtual environment. I so need... All these three Python file we can put under app.py, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. All these three files can be put. What you don't need to do then, this api.initab, db.initab. What you'll be doing rather, a, within this db object, you'll be passing on app like this. Okay, both. Here also. Oh, so on that time, here. we don't need the db.init. No, no, we don't need db.init. See, the... why is, see, if I pass on app here, the app is not defined. Right? App is not defined. So, do we, will we import app from, app.py no why because in app.py we are actually importing our resources and models so that is like things going from here to there and coming back to the same model so we don't want to do that oh, so just once more repeat sir that their part right. go to that app.py now what you are telling sir if i have the single file then i don't need to write this db.init app no See, the thing is, how do you actually instantiate app object and pass on the create instantiate API object and pass on app? You actually provide app here. This is the conventional way of doing it. Okay. Now consider that everything is there in the same module. So app is defined. Right? We will have this, this thing first, right? App flask name. Then we will have uh, API equals to API in bracket app. Why we can pass app? Because app is defined here. Here app is not defined. Right? You're getting? Therefore, we just instantiate it and then import it and then pass app here like this. Is it clear? Hmm. Not clear. Okay. Wait.
I created test.py. So here I'm importing from flask import flask. Okay. From from. Okay. First thing. Second thing. Let me copy these two lines. Second thing, what I want? SQL alchemy. Right? From SQL alchemy import. What do we import from SQL alchemy? SQL alchemy. Right? From Flask RESTful, what did we import? We imported API and resource. All right now we'll instantiate app object how do we do that app equals to class underscore name okay done. now how do we instantiate api object in uh, uh, database object i write dv equals to sql alchemy and then i pass on app okay. similarly I'll write API equals to API and I pass on app. Why was it possible here? Because app was defined. Here it was defined. Okay. But if you see, when we modularize, SQL Alchemy is defined here, app is defined here, and API is defined here. Okay, so how will you pass app here? Because app is not there in that module. Okay. But getting so what we do we just instantiate it as an object import it through application and then use in it and then pass on app because app is defined here okay sir. what the idea so by in dot in it underscore app we are giving app to every uh non-defined all these are objects no we are see this uh we are using api but where this api will work with app we are using database but where this database will work with app right so the conventional way when you okay let me show you the documentation i have flask documentation uh this uh, no right yeah, I have RESTful documentation, right? So if you go to uh, basic argument, okay, let me just type in Flask, okay, Flask SQL Alchemy. Okay, then we'll go to uh, configuration. Okay. Yeah. So when I, I want to actually create a object, DB object, define models, configuration keys, simple quick start. Yeah. No, this is actually using the way we do, uh, we have already done it. But what I was showing is here we can pass on app object because we are creating app. Okay, you see this app is defined after SQL Alchemy, right? After DB. So here, if I want to pass app, I cannot do that because app is not defined only. So I'll use init app. Okay. So what do we do actually? We when we create object, we need to tell that we are using SQL Alchemy object which is relating to app object. Okay, so app needs to be passed on as an argument. Okay, we can do that if we have app API and DB object in the same module. So we can pass on app like this. Okay, but till now what we did, our app was in different, all were, you know, individually in different modules. So what we could do was just use init app. Okay, so what is actually happening with init app? You are passing on app as an argument to this api object that is what we are trying to do that's all 
understood sir understood right so leave it as this we are not using this one this comment and say so sir could you explain what cores does do ha huh. give me a so basically cores uh, stands for cross origin resource sharing okay cross origin resource sharing so uh, let me go to our front uh, uh, actually our dashboard okay i want to go to dashboard and show you so this is week 6 and this is lab assignment okay and we want to actually go to swagger so if you see this the actually swagger ui opens at this okay so this is where it is running right this is the base url and this are the endpoints where my this document is actually running all right whenever i create uh, uh, the application uh, with flask restful there is apis with the flask restful where will they run they will run in base url right uh, http colon Slash slash local host or one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one colon five thousand. There it will run, right? So what is happening? You are uh, when I go to an endpoint, particular endpoint. You see the servers here, right? So when I go to a particular endpoint, what is it exactly hitting? HTTP from till here and then API slash core slash core ID. Okay, this is what it is hitting. Who is hitting from here? So will it, will this be defined for this? You getting what I'm saying? I didn't get the last part. Like I'm saying, this this documentation yes, that sir. I'm trying to access is located on this server or this yes. domain. Okay? Yes, sir. And within this domain, I'm trying to get a resource of one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. Which local machine? Where is this local machine? for this for this uh, domain name for this url there is no such thing as 127.0.0.1 yes sir yes sir right so if there is no existence how will it uh, show resource which machine it will access basically right so let's say i create an application in my machine and i tell, uh, tell you to uh, go open your browser and type in localhost 5000 will you get what i am uh, no sir uh, no right no, sir. why because the local host for you is something different the local host for this url is something different yes sir right so what is happening here there is a cross origin origin of this file and origin where your api is are stored is different different origins and you are trying to get a resource between these origins so you will not get file that is the error okay, okay so if i try it out execute i should get cross origin resource sharing error okay got it right so url scheme uh, scheme must be http or https everything all those things are defined but i'm see what is the url and what was request url this okay and where is this here no link at all right therefore we are getting this error. okay now you really want to uh, get the same data from this document only how do we do that we provide this this thing course okay so in cross origin we are giving our own app so then things will be connected internally okay so it allows like for example then i can access the details from your local host something like that no uh, no 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 this uh, where this server is there no this file will be able to access local host in my machine i have opened it in my machine right yes sir yes sir okay. so the local host will be defined for this machine in this url also okay and yeah, that is what we are trying to do okay thank you sir okay now we will uh, activate our environment right so it is activate uh, my environment slash scripts slash Activate. The environment is activated. Once this is done, what you need to do is you need to do pip install 
flask is full okay give a space right flask force okay so these are the two things that you need to install at this point okay so all these things will be installed it is already there in my package because see i have saved that right it is there flask course flask rescue all these things are there therefore it is saying requirements already satisfied okay but it might not be there because you are creating it for the first time so in in your virtual environment so these things will be installed what you need to do is then pip freeze uh, uh, close angle bracket requirement.txt in your requirement.txt will be updated okay so those things uh, are something that you will have to do once this is done what i'll do is i'll try to run the app python so my application is running okay so first what what i'll do is i'll test my api whether it is actually retrieving right resources right so what i'll do is i'll open postman this is the uh, postman application which is an embedded application right so it is downloaded and installed in my system okay so since this application is downloaded and installed it is a part of my machine i don't need to specify core i will not have things like core zero why because the local host for this application is a local host for vs code and everything that is there in my machine okay so what is the good thing about this machine or uh, this application is you can specify what method you want to use okay get post put otherwise we would have written form then put uh, you know action or method as post and then would be able to send or uh, uh, make a request to the uh, server with the help of post method right that was the conventional way but here we can directly mention the method and things will happen okay what is the me method that we have defined we have defined get method okay so what i'll do i'll go for get method and here i'll go to the request url what will be the request url http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 is running on 5000 port and what is the endpoint that i have defined it is api slash all all directories when i hit enter let's see what happens so, yeah so it was in visualize somewhere so if i see the raw i can see that the data is retrieved from the database and the dictionary that I created is now showing the data in the form of JSON. Okay. Why we are using JSON? Because I can then transfer this data from one uh, app to another app without knowing how to configure this data in that app. Right? What do I mean by that? How would I expect my application to see this data? Where is the data? Where is the data? For example, if I'm running this application here, okay, local host, the 5000, what do I see here? I'll see the registered directors, right? So this is the, uh, the way my application shows. How does it do that? Because I have rendered this data into the template and then write, uh, written the code for it, written the format, specified the format in which I want to show, I've written table, everything, right? This is what is done in my app. Right. Somebody else creating the same app will have a different way of representing same data. Right. So I don't need to worry about being the person, the API being the person who is just sharing the data should not worry about what format the data needs to be shared. Okay. So they share in JSON. Okay. Now what I'll do is as an application developer of this app, which app, this app, I'll retrieve the data as JSON and then format it the way I want. That is the that is why the best way of transferring data within application is done by json and not by something html or something right so you uh, imagine you are uh, retrieving some data from a different database and you want to uh, represent that data into uh, a, uh, pro probably a table just as we did here okay but what you are getting an html which represents the same data in the form of list so how do you work with that data Right. Rather, what I do, I can take the data in its raw format. That is the reason if you see here, this is called as raw format, JSON format. I take the data. Now, I it is uh, in my, uh, what we can say, it is in my reach. How do I want to 
format this data, whether I want to create an HTML file, pass on this data to HTML file so that it renders, whether I want to save this data as a text file, whether I want to save this or keep this data as a JSON, whether I want to not show it, but directly store into some different database. So that is something that I decide. Okay, that is the reason we call this format as raw format because anything can be done with this type of data. Any issues till this point? That is the meat. Any issues till this point? Is it understood till this point? Not understood also. Uh, post this code meaning week five code. It is then already I've shared in the portal. Week five code I've already shared in the portal. Week six. Okay. Week six meaning what code you're asking? Can you unmute and say what I'm teaching? So this code I'll later share, but let me first finish the session now. So this code, this app.py, this is the week five code, right? This is all week five code. I've just added a new file and I've written this code. That is why I've not shared and week five code is already shared with you. Got it? So once this session is done, I will again uh, uh, zip everything and share a new code as a week six code. Okay, what if you hit browser endpoint? Yeah, you still get the JSON. I'll show you. Uh, okay, this is where we are working, right? So what is the endpoint? Slash API slash all vectors. You still get the JSON. Now, what is the difference? Now, if I go back and go to inspect and go back and go to network and reload this, we see all directors, right? Now, the response generally we see HTML, right? I showed you before also. Generally, we see HTML, but here it is showing JSON. Okay, now how do we see that? You see the content type application JSON. Okay, so browser will show everything. Application JSON. Okay. There is one more way of doing this uh, differently. Okay, what I can do is I can open my terminal. I can open another CMD terminal here, right? Let me just add one. So this is another uh, CMD terminal. Okay, this is where it was going. This is partial. Let me change it to CMD. 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 Okay, command prompt. Okay, what I can do is I can write Perl http colon forward slash 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 slash api slash all directors okay if i do not mention the method it does it by default get oh curl it's curl c u r l not c u r Now it is hitting fail to connect. I see this. I mean, I, I, I wait, wait. Let me open here. Let me open a different tab. So that is port 500. Uh, it should be 5000, right? Oh, really? I did that mistake. Oh. So many times I'm writing that for MSC. Let's see now. Okay, now this is the response. Okay, if I do not put anything, it shows the response. Let me do one more thing. I'll write hyphen V. Let's see what we get. Hyphen V will give us not only the response, but everything, every other detail also. The request header, and then the response, and then you see the response, and then see the type of response. Okay, so the curl is a one curl is one way of uh, making a HTTP request. I can just write curl www.google.com. I'll get the Google response. Yes, okay, so you can try that. 
Okay, I'm getting this. So we can also make requests like this. Okay, but this is most preliminary way, most primitive way where we did not have browsers to render things. So then we use curl. Now we use things like browsers and Postman. Okay, this is one thing. If you are working with VS Code, what you can do is just open, uh, add this uh, extension called Thunder Client. Okay, Thunder Client. You can just open a new request, and in the request here, what you can put is same thing. I'll be cautious while putting in the this thing. I can also put local host. Colon five thousand slash VPA slash all. So I get the response here. So you see this now I can, you know, so you consider this as a different application, this as a different application, Postman as a different application. All these different applications are now using the resource that I exposed. What is the resource that I exposed? This one. Okay, so this is how API work. Right? So I'm exposing resource in the rawest format and then people can come in, just query, and they can use that data according to their will. Okay. Now there is one more thing, authentication, which we will study more detail in MAT2. That is a part of MAT2, but uh, this is what we get. Okay. Any idea, any, uh, any confusion till this point? Sir, we have to install Flask course also? Yes, that Flask course also installed, yes. That is different now? Yes, yes, that is different, wait, I'll show you. I did that. Go to another command prompt. Uh, where did I install? Here, right? You pip install flash restful flash course. You keep on giving space and it will take it as a different module and keep on installing. Library package, whatever you call it. Okay. All right. Now let us move ahead with creating the update and delete endpoint. Okay. So that will do. So I'll go back to resources. What I want to do is write a different uh, endpoint. Right? So what I'll do, define what HTTP verb should I use to update a resource? Put, somebody will put, right? We'll be using put to update a resource and I'll be using self. Okay, now what I want to do is when I when I want to delete a resource, I, I will also I should sorry update a resource. I should also define or I should also give the the primary key right or some information on what resource I want to update, right? What resource I want to update? That also and uh, information I should give right. So what I'll be doing is I'll be doing that with the help of ID, okay? Which is nothing but primary key. How did we create a resource? In our original application, how did we create a resource? We assigned or in, in C movie, everything. I wanted to see movie of a particular director. So I gave some information about a director, right? How did I give that? With the help of URL, right? So that information that I was giving was dealt with in the function as an argument. Similarly, what I'll do, I'm taking this, uh, uh, this uh, value as an argument that I'll deal with the help of uh, the URL. Okay, so this is the function uh, that I'm going to create. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to update. Okay, I want to update. So with what name I have to update, that also I have to take care, right? So if I want to update director name, so the updated name I also have to give, right? I need to give the updated name. So that should be given as an argument right? that should be given as an argument and that should go as a part of a request body getting what i'm saying when we post when we use a post when we use a form and we send the data to the server how does the data in the form goes to the server as a request body right so what is that data the name that i entered right the 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 movies that I entered, everything that I entered, information that I entered goes to the server with the help of request body. How does that go to the server when the method was post and that data was taken from the form, right? 
and how did i give that data to the form i could interact with the form right i could just write write and type in here when creating the api i don't have that form interaction right i won't be able to interact with the form so how do i pass on this data as a part of request body so for that reason we have something called as rec parse so it is actually a short for request parser okay so that is what we'll go we'll be using now okay right here what i need to do is i'll use par so i'll just create a different variable called as parser and i'll write tech parse dot request parser request parser object we have to create then we'll use it to add an argument so what i'll write parser dot add underscore argument okay. what is the argument that i want to add i write it in the name so it will be let's say b underscore name okay what will be the type of this argument we generally don't need to provide type every time but let's say we provide the type as spin so it is passed on as a python string str and let me leave it we don't need to even pass on because anyway that the director name that we will be putting in is default a string so why need why do we need to complicate things okay so this is the argument that i added okay so what i am telling the function what i am telling the api that i want to pass d underscore name as an argument okay and who will deal it or how do i parse that argument with the help of this parser okay now what i'll do here i'll have to parse that argument so that argument whatever name i'm filling in into the request body should be taken by this function right it should be taken by this function so how do i do i'll write name you can just write anything or uh, let's say we'll write info info equals to parser dot Parse. Parse. Okay. So see, this is where we are creating an argument and giving the value, providing the value, and this is where we are retrieving that value from the request body and processing it. Right. So in the form, when we created an input field, this is where that was where we actually were giving the values to the server. Okay. And when we use request dot form dot get, that was where we were retrieving the value from the form and processing it. So similarly, in add argument refers to what uh, value I want to pass in as a request body. Okay, now the request body will go to the server, and this is now a part of server. API is a part of server. So what I do, I will parse that argument, whatever value is coming as a request body, and I will uh, parse it and use it, process it, right? So that is what we are trying to do here. Here we have created the argument. Here we are parsing it. Okay. Before that, before going into more details, I'll just show you how this looks. Info. Okay. Info. And what is the value there? It is d underscore name. Okay. And we know what do we expect as an output of an API? What do we expect as an output of an API? We expect that to be a JSON. Here, I'm not writing any function for update. I'm just. Uh, giving a small functionality how uh, data is given and how it is processed that's all okay so here i'll write character name note that this is a string which is acting as a key okay and then value what will be the value of this thing so let us okay now what we have done is we have created uh, this uh, put functionality, but we have not done anything with this ID, right? So for now, just to show you how this parsing works, I'll remove it, right? So I'll just remove it and save it. Okay, let us go back to Postman and do the put thing. Okay, another thing that we did not do was we created the put, but we did not uh, assign it with any other endpoint. If you don't do that, what will happen? This will be the same endpoint, it will work. Okay. But then how it will differentiate? 
with the put method, right? So if I give get and go to all directors, what it will do is retrieve all the directors. But when I put this, what will happen? The functionality within put will run. Right? So let us check this. Right. So what is saying? What is it saying? Message did not attempt to load JSON because the request content type was not application JSON. Why is this happening? Because when I try to run in the put, when I try to run in the put, it was expecting some value to go as a request body, right? So that body I did not provide. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll provide that body. So what I can do, I can just keep the endpoint same and write the body. Okay. Body, I can write raw. Okay. So I can write the body as a raw. Okay. So what I'll write, B name. Because that is the argument that we have defined. B name equals to equals to let's say this is going as a request body. Now let us try this. Sir, for JSON, it has to be double string, right? Double yeah, 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 it has to be double string. That's why I changed. So now you see that I passed on the body and I got director name. Why am I getting this? Because that is what I've printed. Okay, so you note know the difference between input and output. I just passed on D name, but it took director name equals to D name. Right? It was JSON as an input. This is JSON as an output. Okay, this is getting as an output. Okay, just to add something more, what we can do is, I can just write, type, okay, just to show that these two files are different. These two datas are actually one is that is taken and other that is uh, sent back. Okay, so you get this. This is the director one. If I change this to anything else, director 100, the data will be changed into director 100. Why? Because this is how I give information as a request body, and this is how the server has uh, uh, processed it because the code that I've written has is doing only that thing, representing it. That's all. But now we'll use this director name to actually update the name in database. Okay, so what we'll do? We'll use this ID. Okay. This ID will be used to actually retrieve a particular date director name from the database or director object from the database so that I can change that particular director name's name, right? So if I go to, uh, I did not open database. Okay, anyway. So let me go to this JSON. It's not there here. Uh, in new request. So this is the uh, data that I have. Right? This is the data. What is it printing? D director ID and it is then printing director name. Let's say I want to change this Steven Spielberg name to something else. Steven Spielberg 2. Okay. So what do I do? I need to retrieve this first with the help of its ID. That is the reason I am passing another parameter or ID as a parameter so that it retrieves that particular object. Okay. Now everything that I do from here is something that you have already seen. Uh, how? I will show you. So first what I'll do, I'll get that director object, D update. Okay, this is the object that I want to update. So how do I do that? I'll query the director class. And what will I pass on? ID. Okay, now I need to make sure that the thing that I'm passing is an integer. Okay, so that I'll take care later. Okay, how did I take care in app.py that something that is passed on is integer with the help of this converter, right? So similarly, I'll use converters here, okay? Uh, ID, okay? So I'm using D update. So director to update is something that I've gotten here. Then later what I'll do? Later what I do? I'll just write uh, D underscore update. What I what do I want to change? I want to change the name of this particular object, right? So how do I retrieve the name? Dot name because this is already there in the defined attribute in the database. And what with what I want to update it with? This thing, right? So I'll just write this thing here. 
is what we did while updating, right? Just take the attribute, target the attribute, and assign the value. Once this is done, what I'll do? DB dot session dot DB dot session dot commit. That's all. Now this is something that I don't want to return now. I just don't want to return. I want to return uh, only one JSON, which has nothing to do with the. Okay, what I can do is leave it as is. Here I'll write status, status, and I'll write updated. This is something just to notify. This is just an acknowledgement, right? This is a hard coded JSON, right? The status and updated. It's just an hard coded JSON. Right. Apart from this, what I can do is I can pass on what status code I want as a response. Okay. So this will be the JSON that will be this, uh, responded as a request uh, response body, and this will be responded as a response status code. Okay. Just I can pass on updated. Generally, this 201 is used for created. Okay, so it will show created, but actually we are updating a resource. Okay, so I'll just save it. Okay. Before saving it, I should also create a new endpoint that deals with this, right? So currently this endpoint does not take any data, right? This is a fixed endpoint, does not take any data. Now I need to make a variable data endpoint. So what I'll do, I'll just write same thing. Okay, instead of all directors, I'll just write update director. And then pass on the ID, which I'll be doing with the help of endpoint. So what I'll do this thing. What does this mean? I'm I'm saying that I'm creating this as a endpoint. The number passed on here, API slash update director slash three will actually take three as an ID. Okay, retrieve that object from the database whose primary key is three. Why primary key? Because we are using get. Okay, then retrieve the name and assign the name that we're giving in response body and then commit. This is what this endpoint is doing. Okay, we're getting multiple things that it is doing, then we'll save. So this put uh, self comma ID is taking ID from, uh, the from this endpoint. From this endpoint, yeah. Okay. Yes. The way it has taken in uh, app, yes, also, right? Yes. Same. So when we created a variable endpoint here, that then argument we define, has to oh, yeah. be provided. Okay. And now let us try that. Okay, so now this all directors with this will not work. Why? Because we have changed the endpoint. And what we have done that update the director, update score director slash three. Update slash API slash update director slash three. I guess this is the endpoint. API slash yeah. Okay, now with that done, I'll if I do a send. It will get director name updated. Okay, I got the status, and this is the data that was transferred. Okay, because I didn't change it. Now let us check what is happening with the. No, I want to see whether it is update or not. What will I do? You can call all directors. Yeah, I can call all directors. I can change the get method from here. API all directors. Okay, and then none. Okay, because now I'm not passing any data. You see this director hundred. So this is actually so getting sir, retrieved from database. By this raw, you uh, did the job of form data. What uh, whatever we did from the form. Yeah, okay. with this update, I did the form thing. With see what I did. In form, what did you do? You created an input field in HTML. Okay. Yes. And then you process that input field from where the uh, uh, request dot form dot get. All right. Same thing I did here. I created an uh, argument here. Creating an argument implicitly create a, creates an argument which I can pass as a request body. So when I create something here, it can be passed on as a request body. Okay. Then this is how I handle it. When something comes to me as a request body. I will be getting the uh, the uh, uh, method, the URL, and what will be there in the request body? The actual data, right? So that is what is passed here. Uh, in I mean, I remove that. But what was passed? D no, underscore no. name equals to no, directors no. hundred. That was passed, right? JSON. Okay. Now this is how I deal with that JSON. 
So when I do parser dot parser, so everything that was passed will be taken as an argument, right? Which is analogous to request dot form dot get. Okay. The only difference was when I did request dot form dot get, I was assigning it to individually a variable. Here I'll get a, a, a dictionary. So info will info. be a dictionary, a dictionary, and this is how I uh, retrieve a particular value from the dictionary. Okay. And sir, this uh, this parser dot add argument is uh, what you specified for uh, whatever argument it will take. Hmm. Yes. Okay. What will be the key again? The name attribute there in uh, HTML. Okay. Right. Name equals to d underscore name. So that was the key name. Okay. Right? And so this add argument is actually the argument name, key name. Okay. Okay. We can add more more inside it. Okay. Let us let let me do one more thing. Let me print info. Printing info will actually print the info on the console or terminal. Let us do that and try it once again. So I'll go back to put, all right, uh, update director. Director slash four. Okay, now when I'm doing this, it is anticipating or it is expecting a body, right? So what I'll do, I'll go to body and write. See, I can put it as a form data also. Okay, here I'll provide key, here I'll provide value. But the better way to do that is raw. Okay, so I have this body. What I can do is write a different director name. Right? So tell me a name. Tell me any name. I don't know, sir. I don't know much. Okay, let's say director. I'm also not getting a single name. I'm just writing anything related to director updated. Okay, director updated is the director new name. Okay, so what will happen with this? I'll send this. Jason, I got that is okay. Now let us see what we got in the uh, this thing. You get this? So it is coming as a dictionary. Okay, that is what we are retrieving. Okay, and what has actually happened? This change has happened in the database. So how do we see that? We go to get and this. And we have to do this none because we are not sending any body with get. Okay, director updated. Okay, so this is how we update a director name. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're getting why we are using API? Why do we need API? How do we are creating it? How we are we link? How we are? How are we linking it with the URI and things? Yes, sir. Okay, you can work on this. I mean, watch this session again once more, so things will be clear. Now we'll create an endpoint for deleting a director. Okay, once that is done, we should be able to uh, get these two functionality in place, right? Which one? This one. So how would you do this for, uh, through a browser, like the put request? That is the problem with browser. You cannot specify the request. That is the reason we are having things like Postman, uh, a documentation of API, Insomnia. That is the reason we are having this. Browser, we, don't, we won't be able to do that. We cannot define method uh, by ourselves in a browser. Like, but in like URL, we have that request body, like question mark, then all the parameters. Mm -hmm. So, um, using that as an endpoint, that won't work. URL as an endpoint, didn't get. Like we have that query string, right? After the question. Uh, we query can... string. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, but in that case. Okay. Generally, what happens is when you provide something in the URL itself as a query string, you are passing on data to the server, okay, with the help of URL, right? So, when that is done, Generally, the uh, HTTP verb is get. That is the reason when you send information using get, you see information on URL. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So that's why again, you it is a it is a tough task to tough. I am not sure how, but uh, not really sure how. But we cannot provide method or uh, explicitly with browser. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. We can just run some endpoints. I can create, uh, uh, delete, or I can create a put request. But I am not sure, or we are not sure how to, you know, actually create a request with the browser. Okay. That is the reason. Generally, we will use get and post because in browser we can get directly by by default we'll get and post we can put by form. Right. Now, how do we use that post method to actually update director name? So this director value, new value that I'm giving, how we will give it with the browser? Yeah, we can give it by form. Form. And what will be the method in form? Post. Post. Yes. So we can give that. So basically, when we say uh, we are explicitly writing about this get, put, post, and everything, we are also saying that these methods can be used interchangeably. I can use post to not only create a resource, but also to update a resource. Yes, okay. Because underlying definition of update will remain this. Correct. Yes. It can be a part of post, right? APIs are better in that because, because APIs are generally dealt with, with, you know, this thing, you specify the, the method and you specify. So what will this do actually? Uh, it will not allow me same request. When I do that with put and I try to again change uh, director updated, it will take care of the schema also. Okay. So then those are the things. I mean, when we say, when I want to create a resource in the database using port, it will allow me only once. Once meaning if I try to create the same resource with same data, everything, it will not allow. Not the case with post. That is called as item potence of uh, HTTP verbs. You remember I talked about safe and item potence? Yes, sir. Or did I talk about only safe? I think you only talked about safe. Okay, safe. Okay. So there is some one more uh, uh, property that is called as item potent HTTP verb. So what is item potent HTTP verb? It does not allow, see, it will allow to add a resource in the database only once. Okay, only okay. once meaning with same detail. So let's say if I add a Christopher Nolan with ID one. Later on, I cannot update it with same Christopher Nolan, and which is intuitive. Why? Because updating means something needs to change. Okay, I cannot update Christopher Nolan with Christopher Nolan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Right. So that is the thing. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay. Shall we close this? This thing is gone, and uh, now we, what we want to do is create the endpoint for delete. I hope this is clear. Right. Till till now, is this thing clear? I'm not saying understood everything. I'm just saying clear. Sir, and uh, how we will update the relation? How you will update the relation with the uh, director dot uh, movies or films dot append. Okay. Uh, by this method only? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Just we did not take that data, right? Uh, but first we have to delete and then we have to append. Hmm, so that underlying definition will remain same. Right? Okay. Here we are only learning how to pass on the data and use that okay. data. Okay. Okay. The function will remain same. Function like will the, anyway remain same. That yeah. is the, the work so we are doing for that. We have to done for this one. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. So the, the, the functionality, meaning the application logic will not change, right? The way you are passing on data and dealing with data will change. When it is application, you're doing it with controllers. When it is not an application, you're doing it with API. Okay. And now this is a good thing, right? Because I use this to actually retrieve something from database without actually knowing what the API, what the application is and uh, without actually rendering it. Right. But is the converse uh, true? Meaning can I not uh, do something like this? This is a defined endpoint in my application. Can I not get it? Let's see. First, see what am I getting? I'm getting the raw, right? So it will still work. Okay, the endpoints defined by controller will still work, but we will get every time we'll get a template. We will not get JSON. That is the difference between an API and controller. Controller will only give you response in the form of HTML and APIs can give you raw data. 
Okay, so if I preview this, you can actually see the application. Okay, so this Postman care is a universal thing. It is what is it? What is it doing? It is trying to retrieve a particular URL with a particular method. Now you understand why this is important. If request dot method equals to get and request dot method equals to post. Okay, so that we don't create, you know, don't keep on creating URL for every other function. Right. So we can, I can do get put post delete patch head with the same URL. Okay. Multiple functionality, same URL, just change the method. That uh, additional feature we are getting with API. Okay. And transfer of data easily is all, all, always there. Is this clear? Yeah, sir. But mostly in a business application when uh, the you don't know how the end users are going to use it. So you don't render HTML, but rather something like a JSON or a XML. That's right. Yeah, right. that's right. So that is why we, when we give them the URL, we don't give them uh, application URL. We give them resource URL. Okay. These are the resource URLs. Because these are directing to APIs only, not any endpoint of application. Okay. And then we document it. I mean, how should this endpoint be received? Here I've defined or I was creating it from the scratch. So you knew that when I go for this put request, I also have to provide a form body or what is the format of form or what is the format of data I pass on. So that documentation needs to be done. Okay. When you are visiting this U API, this should be the request body. This should be the method. And how do you expect? And this will, this is how you expect the output. So all that documentation is done. That's why you have Swagger. Okay, you get it? Probably are you able to relate all these things, Postman, Swagger, API? Why are we using certain things? Is this, is this clear to some extent? Nobody responding? Uh, sir, I'm not clear about uh, Swagger. Okay. All right. Now uh, you forget about the session till now. Okay. Now I'm telling you, see, this is the API endpoint. This is the API endpoint. Okay. Use this API endpoint and get me some data. Okay. So to use this information, what do you know? You should know this uh, endpoint is valid for which HTTP uh, method, right? You should know that. First thing. Second thing, is there a requirement of request body? Is there a requirement of request body? So For this request endpoint, body means, request body means the arguments do, does this require something information from our side to be given to server? No, 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 sir. It doesn't require. Okay. So what are you giving with this ID? Okay, we are giving the director name. Director. Okay. So, what are you trying to do with this endpoint? Sir, uh, retrieving the data. No, with this particular endpoint. Yes. What are you trying to do? What is happening? So, we are okay. updating. With what? With ID. Okay, with ID, we are updating. What are we updating? Sir, the data related to ID. Director okay. name director name we are updating so yes, yes. what is the name you want to update it with how do you pass it okay. that we are doing with arguments right so yeah. when what what did i tell you i mean i told you we have to i mean this you knew that this endpoint requires a body where i pass on director name so two things i am passing on which director name has to be changed and with what? Yes, okay. yes. So which director name is changed is okay. So with looking at the endpoint, you need you understand that okay, there is a parameter called ID which I need to pass. That is understood. But how do you tell this same URL that I want to replace the name or I want to edit update the name of director with this name? How do you do that with the request body? This is the request body wrong this is the request body this is where you provided the name right yes so 
since you being the first time user of this endpoint how would you know all these things that this this should be the format in which i provide name d name is the value uh, uh, key i should take how will you know so that documentation actually helps you with this so let me open this uh, swagger so what do i see here this is the endpoint okay i need to provide course id to use this api i need to provide course id okay when i'll be using this uh, api it should be it will be going with put as a request for uh, http request or verb right now course id i put so this whatever i'm putting uh, can be put here right i am not editing it here that has to be put here okay and then it also asks for schema right schema so how should you you know put the data that needs that will get updated so this is the documentation of how to use this particular endpoint okay so this is only documentation and we have to do it uh, on postman also on yeah no no this is just a documentation now you have to write the underlying code that you know give the expected output like this like this like this yes and that okay. we have to give it in the postman by postman see you have a documentation right so you have things like try it out you can do it directly from here okay so that is why api documentations are written in a way they define the endpoint they define the http verb they allow you to check if uh, what result you are getting right so here if i put course id this course id will go here how did we put that course id using postman director id with postman we did it in the url because i could do in url okay here i did right the update director then slash four if we can do this um, uh, in swagger also then why we are using postman no this is an alternative swagger is probably i mean swagger is the right way of doing it every api that you create you also provide a documentation okay, okay. but while creating api you actually need to test small things like right? minute things you have to test so swagger gives you better interface on uh, see i can provide data and the form it in which it this data goes right everything can be seen and i can see the result there itself like it is working as a ide or a yeah program. it is working as an id for api okay okay but only that you cannot code here for the api in id you can actually code all right now this documentation is actually you, uh, not only giving you information of how to use an api it is also giving you the provision to try it out with one that is why we document apis getting okay sir yeah got it sir all right so many information i understand but yeah so we'll have to take it by parts to go through these videos once again i mean just as you all did for week 5 right sql alchemy and probably things were clear so this is what we are trying to okay now i'll create one endpoint for uh, delete and then we'll extend it for students right sir suppose there are different attributes and i want to update then i have to write different endpoints for different attributes that i want to update no 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 you have, you just need to keep on adding arguments okay yeah yeah i, I have to add arguments yes you yeah. keep on adding arguments whatever value uh, you are sending yeah so, so if one, i yeah one put ahead, one put request will like update everything and yes, just have to yeah okay you i just see have here to add this arguments. you see yes. this yeah this is just one key because i just added one argument yeah right i can add 100 arguments and this info right parser dot r parse args will store every argument that you added as a dictionary key value key value yes right yes. now what to do with that data you can write in the code okay yeah okay. so it will just take accordingly right accordingly yeah. yes so if you add one more argument let's say m name yes it will take that also yeah understood understood And th this saves lots of lots of trouble because i was creating project and i had to like create different endpoints for same thing like updating That's everything see the the whole idea of creating a good application is reduce the number of endpoints yeah increase the number of http verbs yes right yes. so you can see here with the same endpoint with two different endpoints i am dealing with i can deal with multiple other functionalities yes 
right get put post delete four are anyway defined yeah right okay yeah all right now what we'll do is uh, we will add or we will delete a director okay we'll delete a director so we'll create an endpoint for that uh, function for that if delete self what do i need to know or what do i need to pass on to delete a particular director just director id right direct delete a director with whose id is 3 that is all i need right so i'll just pass on id as one parameter okay while deleting do i need to give some information as a request body do i need to give any information as a request body while deleting or only id will do the trick so only id can also do the trick only yeah. id will do right so if i want if i retrieve i can retrieve a particular object with the help of id i can just apply the delete uh, operation right in update what i had to do i just first i had to retrieve that okay first i had to retrieve an object and then update with something else so that something else had to be provided here when i am able to retrieve the next step, next step is to just delete and things will be done right so i just need only this id what i'll do with this id i'll retrieve the right here this update will change to delete okay once this object is retrieved what will i do bb dot session dot delete bb dot session dot delete what will come here in delete dedel dedel the object name once the delete is done we need to commit it commit so this will make the change in database now we need to send some information some acknowledgement that this has been done So what I'll do, I'll just return some hard coded JSON. What I'll write, I'll, I'll just write action, or just I'll write status. Deleted. That's all. And I can also uh, give a different endpoint. Say I'm not sure what to give. Uh, let's give two zero two. I'm not sure if it is a defined endpoint. but let's uh, sorry uh, status code but let's try with this okay so when i save this when i save this do i need to write any other endpoint for this or this will do the job for me somebody tell me i mean do i need like to this is my question like how we are relating endpoints with the functions okay like how endpoints is uh, relating with the functions like this function has to be called hmm. see so there are two different three different functions okay this function does not require an input right it does not require anything in the as a variable in url does it require yes no so okay. this will automatically map with the endpoint that does not have any a uh, variable part in the url okay so there are two error urls defined api all directors api update director okay so this endpoint is is the one that does not have any variable part this endpoint is the one that has an has a variable part right so the functionality that does not have any input does not have any variable to deal with will automatically map with the url that does not have any variable okay now talk about let's talk about these two so this also requires a variable that is getting passed in this endpoint uh, in this in this endpoint and wait let me just uh, this is a functionality or uh, this function put function is expecting id and we are passing on id here delete function is also expecting an id so it will also get mapped to this url okay both are getting mapped to same url So when I do this URL, when I hit this URL, what will happen? Put will happen or delete will happen? 
if both are having same nature of taking the argument and working with them they are doing something but the nature of taking arg argument is same self underscore id uh, uh, comma id they re they need id this also need id okay so they both will get mapped to url that is taking id they both will get mapped to this but how will if i if i go to this url in in postman how will delete happen or how will update happen won't that happen uh, based on the request method? Uh, yeah, that will happen based on this thing. Okay, so when I hit the same URL but do delete, delete will be called. Okay, when I go to same URL and do put, put will be called. Okay, so basically you can see the thing that I'm writing constant does not have any meaning. When I'm writing update director does not mean it will only update direct, uh, director, it, it cannot delete director. Right, it does not mean. Again, I'll show you how this works. Okay, so when we save this code and go back to here in, in Postman, I'll go to delete. Okay, and then I'll go to all, what was the thing? API slash API slash update. 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 update as APS as update director and let's say three. Okay. Now there are one, there is one more thing, right? The, what is the other thing that is defined here in delete? I just needed ID. I did not need any request body. So what I'll do, I'll go back and do this. Now. Okay. Now, if I do this, let us try to do this happening. Status deleted. Okay. Wrong. Status deleted. Now, how do we see that? Something has happened or not? We'll see the gate. Uh, we'll see the get and API all wait enter for this that the third one is gone. Okay, so update director does does not have meaning. The the format in which he, the endpoint is created has a meaning. Okay, and that is the reason this HTTP verbs are so important because they differentiate the functionality. Uh, that is associated with same endpoint here okay. right but what we'll do i mean this does not look good right update a director and director only gets deleted does not look good so what i'll do i'll just create a same endpoint let's have some redundancy in the application okay. so i have defined this both are having same nature and i know that this you know, the hard coded text does not have any meaning. So I can create a same, a different URL, different U, U endpoint, do the same thing. But what I'll take care, when I put this, the method will delete, will remain delete. And when I put this, the method will remain uh, put. Okay, both the endpoints are doing the same thing. Can I update a director with this? I can. Right? And yes. the API slash delete director slash int ID. And then what will actually make the difference? The end, uh, the, uh, the request, request method. method. Okay. So based on the nature of uh, URLs, the functions get mapped. Okay. Now when we share the, uh, when we document these, what we'll do? I'll write get for this, put for this, and delete for this. Getting? So this is how the mapping happens. It's not that this is now mapped to update. This is now mapped to delete. Both are mapped to both. What is uh, something that is bringing the, uh, what we call the differentiation? HTTP verb. Sir, uh, like then we, how we will specify this with our HTML program? Like the, which request has to be called and uh, which action has to be done? That is the pro that is the thing. No, HTML is not involved here. There is only JSON. Yes, but uh, like here in the postman, we are doing it manually. Like we have to uh, do the get or post or put hmm. or delete. But how we will specify that uh, things in the See, program? See, these are these are API endpoints. They will only give you uh, uh, JSON output. They will never render HTML. Okay, you, are, you cannot use it here. I mean, 
slash API slash update director and then render. You cannot do that. What you have to do is use this API in the application and define a different endpoint. Okay. So what is the endpoint? What I what I'll do is I'll create an endpoint here, something like this. App dot route. With, with method is equal to. Uh, no, 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 method will remain get and post. See, uh, where exactly that uh, in in application? What did I say? You cannot specifically add a method apart from get and post, right? By default, it will be get. With form, it will be post. So I cannot call put method or delete method with the help of front end or front facing application, right? I cannot create a controller that hits a particular U, uh, URL with a particular uh, method. It can be either get or post. That's all. Okay. So how do I deal with that? I'll create an endpoint here. So uh, request dot method won't be put. It can't be put. It, it can't be put be. because that condition will never appear. Oh, yeah, that condition will never appear. Okay. Right. So if I write app dot route, what I'll do? I'll write. I'll create an endpoint update director. Note that there is no API. So that is how we differentiate endpoints. Okay. Update director. All right. And uh, here also I'll add that. Int ID okay. and methods can remain get and post. Okay, now here we are just calling an API and doing the things with that, right? We are just calling an API, so we don't even need to. That will happen with get, so we don't even need to provide method. So when there is no methods provide, the default method is get. Okay, so I leave it as is. Then I'll create a new uh, uh, function that is. Update underscore dir. Let's say, okay. and since I've added uh, ID as a variable, I'll have to pass it. Okay. Then I'll call the endpoint here. Okay. How will I call the endpoint? There is something called as requests that needs to be imported. We'll import requests. Okay. Here we'll create something called as response and right and then we will uh, uh, import or uh, hit that uh, particular endpoint with a particular uh, uh, HTTP verb. How do I do that? I'll write the requests. This is not a request dot get dot form. This is not a request. This is a request plural. Okay. Plural. Okay. So it is a request dot with the dot I provide method. So I'll write request dot put. And then, as an argument, I'll provide link to that uh, thing. API. What is the API here? Sorry. Generally, don't go into this part because then it becomes too much. API update director int id. Now, int id for this argument is a string. So, how do I change that? I write a format string. And then I'll also pass on the data. And what is the data? It will be passed on as a uh, the way we were doing in Postman, right? Here we were doing with this form data and raw data, right? But in request, how do we pass on the data? The same attribute that we have created, right? D underscore name. To whatever name it is, okay. We'll pass on the JSON. This is the name that we are providing. Okay, you get this, sir. But this name we have to take it from the user, yeah. So that I've done. So I have defined an endpoint. Anyway, if even uh, so, how will I fill this now? I will go to HTML form in templates. Templates. I'll go to uh, HTML form. Where is where are all directors? This right, and where there is update, I'll pass on this as the endpoint. Update. 
that is update uh, what is the endpoint name update underscore director okay and what will be coming here this thing curly braces double curly braces this is how you fill the data very complex procedure but this and, is how you work with and how we will take the director name into it director name is already there no i am just filling on for this button update Achha, so, no, no, that, no. okay okay got it so first we'll create that thing no request.form.get then we'll create a form then we'll in that submit we'll add this okay i'm just superficially going so probably i've missed that here what we'll do update director okay director id same href will be there but this will actually open a form okay so what i'll add here uh, where is the code in app.py here i'll add two things first two methods okay then open form if request dot form dot request dot form request dot method equals to get then it will render a form a request dot method dot post then this will happen so basically update with application is happening by post but with api is happening by put okay it is i mean i'm just giving the overview i'm not actually doing anything i'm not uh, actually saying that okay this is how we do uh, use apis in application i have not taken that part i've given just a brief overview okay that was not planned that's why i did not want to go into details okay so the idea was to create the update and delete endpoint for director and extend it to our students. Okay, and the everything that I said in last 10 minutes is how we use APIs in the application. Okay, so that is something that can be done later. That's why we never ask you to even do a lab assignment that uses API. Right? That is why we have a documentation. So the idea is to only create endpoints and make them working. Okay, and second thing in the project also, we never ask you to use your API endpoints in the project because you know there is a lot of uh, two and fourth happening confuse right? okay sir okay no no sir got it getting the idea right so yes, don't sir. worry about the code that I've done for after requests don't worry about that code. okay this is the I was just saying how to use API in your application Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the whole idea, the important part of this session is to get how to create this resource file. Okay. There is one more thing that we did that we did not do was. Uh, currently, I don't want my app to crash. That's why I'll comment this code out. Okay, because we are not returning a valid response, right? So it will crash. So we'll comment this. Uh, and we'll close this. We don't need this. Save it and close. Okay, we don't need test. We know this. We need resources. We'll save this. I also wanted to show. Yeah, so it says no module name request. Why? Because we are in the virtual environment. We don't need to worry about that. Right app dot py. Okay. Do not import. Okay, so application is running. What, what other thing I wanted to show was let us go to this API. Leak underscore vector slash. Okay, so if we do this. And we have to also provide the method delete. We do this, it returns status deleted, and you also see this status code. Okay, status code is 202 accepted. So, accepted is probably the I mean, the status codes and their definitions are actually defined. Okay, so when you see 200, it is okay, status okay, 201 created. Okay, 202 accepted. Okay, so, so I mean, I would say I would have created a right endpoint because I wanted to delete and that delete process is accepted. Okay, if I do with update, update director, now I cannot update director 
two because it is there deleted, right? So I'll go with uh, I guess four, and we'll provide some raw data. Okay. Right, right. Four. Deleted. So I'm not really bothered about this. What I'm bothered about is the status. So it should have been put. Put. Sorry. Oh, so I deleted four also. Sorry. Yes, updated, updated. So you see this status code of 201 created. Why is this coming? Why are these status codes coming? Because we have defined those status codes. Right? As a return, you have to return this JSON and return this status code. Here also, where is it? Here. Return this JSON and return this status code. So that was that was something I was trying to verify. Okay. Clear this part? So we don't. Uh, it is mandatory to give the status code. Uh, no, it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory to give the status code. Every time it will be two hundred. Okay, right. So when you don't give any status code, it the will be process, called two hundred. It will call two hundred because that is okay. Whatever thing you did happened successfully. So that was my question regarding the week five lab assignment. It said everything should have returns two hundred. Hmm. But so, post method is returning 302. Yes. How do we change? No, 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 no. Post method is not actually returning 302. What is happening with post method? Every time you write a post method, what is it returning? Not the status code. Where do you return? I'll show you what I'm saying. So this app.py, okay. This is get and this is post. What is happening at the end of post method? Redirecting. Redirect. So after don't relate it. Don't relate 302 with post. Relate 302 with redirect. So whenever there is a redirect, the status code it is binds 302. The file which which okay. take the argument 302. Right. And in lab assignment, what are we checking? When it it is redirect to the endpoint, what is the output of that redirected endpoint? Okay. So that is 200 by default. 200. Yeah. So don't so, worry about. That. So how do we implement? We don't implement anything regarding that. No, no, no. You keep it 302. 302 just says that it is redirection, which is a response to this endpoint. Okay. But when you redirect, what will happen? The actual response to this endpoint is whatever is the response of this endpoint. Okay. Okay. So if it is showing 302, then 200, your code is good. No issues. Okay. Sir. So 302 is not uh, something that is being checked. The status code following that is checked. Got it, sir. Thank you. Okay, so this is what I had for today's session. I mean, I have uh, created endpoint to delete and update director. Same thing can be extended to students. How do we do that? We'll create a different class. Different class. Here it will be, not students, sorry, movies, API movies, okay. Here all directors will change to all movies. Okay. D1 can change to M1, you can keep it as is, but this director will change to movie. Okay. Then for MOV in M1. All movies to MOV dot MID. This is what we have defined. Right? And name is name. So it will be MOV dot name. These are all movies, right? And this is all again what we are retrieving. All movies. So we're done with retrieving all the movies. Next is uh, updating a movie name. Okay. So we'll keep uh, ID as is print uh, leave the print as is will be let's say m update and m update dot name p name so i mean i can do this add another argument called as m name okay. so when i try to print this it will be d name something m name something Okay, 
uh, what else yeah so we were here right uh, not here here okay movie dot name parser parsers info m update first we will query that movie and try to get that movie okay. and then m update dot name equals to whatever we are taking from the info that is m update or uh, m underscore name is m and I'll write movie name. Okay. Status code will be 201 for uh, uh, updated. Just keep it as is. And here it will be just click movie and delete commit and status deleted. That's all. Okay. Now here we'll again map with different endpoints. So it will be mapping to different class, right? That will be movies. Did I change this? API underscore movies. So all the, I mean, all the endpoints defined within this will be mapping to this. Okay. So here I'll change this directors to movies, update director to movie. And they're good to go. Oh, no, this delete is removed. And parser for taking parser parser file parser for parser. taking input. No, so there is see parser doesn't have anything here. I have uh, update. Okay. okay, added no argument. So I've added an argument. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so whatever argument we provide, that will be taken. Done. So we are actually we have actually created now uh, four endpoints, right? Three, six endpoints actually. Two for uh, retrieving directors and movies. Two for updating directors. Two for updating uh, movies. Sorry, one for updating director. One for updating movie. One for deleting director and one for deleting. Okay. Any issues here? I mean, in understanding something, I'm sure. You need one or two revisions more to get the idea, but anything that is there in the code that you did not understand. So here in your file, we don't need that app.py file at all. Where? Go back to your file, sir. Here you have app.py, then what is resource.py and model underscore 2.py. Mm -hmm. You are using only resource.py and model underscore 2.py, right? No, 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 no. I'm using both. See, in app.py, I have in, uh, imported everything and then I'm running app. Okay, app is anyway important. Okay, so see, in initiate instantiation, everything I did, and then I run app. Only thing I'm not doing is not using these controllers. I'm only using API, uh, API endpoints. But keeping these controllers inside the app function, will it work? So we have to delete it, right? In our lab assignment, we have to delete all these controllers. In your lab assignment, you have to delete. Lab assignment will anyway not have these controllers. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, we have to. We shouldn't have. I mean, I am saying your yeah. your app dot py should only have importing configuration and app dot run call. This is regarding week six. Okay, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, but we need but, that model underscore two also. Yeah. So what I'm saying is better do this way. Keep everything in one file, at least for lab assignments. Then we have to copy the model underscore two and whatever content we have in this. Yeah, model is required. Okay, models are required because uh, uh, that is actually storing the data, uh, creating the database, right? So models will be required. Uh, app will be required only for configuration and running the application. So what you can do is uh, uh, in this in this uh, test.py, let's say this is your app.py, you will import everything here 
instantiate db here instantiate api here instantiate app here all this instantiation is done then the things that you are doing here configuration right app dot config that will happen in this file models will be written in this file and resources will be written in this file no uh, controllers okay right so basically we are not creating front end no apis are just back end thing we are not creating any front end so there won't be a, a, a question of app dot route because we are not creating route to render something where where are you viewing postman yeah postman so you can you just post post this is actually this is this is not a uh, web app it is a uh, what we call uh, embedded application you have to download just download postman it should, it is open source okay currently i don't have the link uh, but you can just go click postman postman okay Is open source anyway, so you can now right see Windows sixty four. Okay. Or what you can do is just uh, I mean go to the extensions and install Thunder client. This is the extension of VS Code, so there itself you can see. Okay, same thing. You can change the method, add on uh, the body, and change the URL. So this is uh, already VS Code is downloaded, right? So you can just install Thunder Client as an extension. How do we search for that? Just uh, go to this this search and write Thunder Client, and it should be available. Okay. 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 Uh, so for updating, can you use Post? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what I've done here with port, you can do with post. No issues. Okay. Any other thing related to APIs? We will talk about it uh, more in probably DAO and things. What is the difference between put and post? These are HTTP verbs which do certain things. Okay. Post is generally used to add a resource in the database. And put is generally used to update the resource in the database. Okay, generally, but you can use put to add a resource, post to update the resource. All the HTTP verbs can work in the, uh, I mean, interchangeably. There is no issue with that. But there is a point of conventional use, and I've also stated uh, about their properties, right? So if you go to MDN Web Docs, okay, and then look for HTTP verbs. HTTP verbs or HTTP request methods also. So here you will see all the methods and if you click on those, you will see their properties, how they work and their properties, right? So safe, idempotent, everything which I talked about. Idempotent is the, uh, is, is the property which by which we can add new resource to a database only once. That is the reason you see idempotent here, no. But if you go to put, you will see idempotent as yes. Because put once a resource is added in the database, that same resource with exactly same data cannot be uh, re-added to the database. Okay? The different instance will not be created. So these are subtle differences that you can go through in this uh, website. Okay, and just share. Anything else? No issues? Okay, fine. So if there are no more issues, we'll stop this session now. But you can uh, definitely reach back to me on this course. And if there are more doubts on APIs also, we'll discuss in further weeks also, no issues.
Okay, so shall we close this session today? Yeah, close it, but sir, okay. but I've been to yeah. that week five. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So I put the, put on the request. Let's see if it got extended. It will be extended. Yeah. Otherwise, no chance. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I put on the request. I passed on the request to the team. Let's and see. sir, can you just cross check my code, sir? Yeah, I'll go through. Okay then. All right. We'll close the session here. Okay. So Thank, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir.